We had a totally pristine Mojave ecosystem here and they're basically bulldozing everything. They don't care if they're building on top of the most biodiverse desert ever or a popular area to hike in. It would really be a disaster to convert this landscape to solar panels that can go on rooftops. I don't think that fighting climate change should result in the extinction of species. I've lived in Nevada for over 20 years. Outside of its largest two cities, it's a pretty wild place still. The basins, in between its accordion-like mountain ranges, are home to vast expanses of vegetation, like forests, the kind the desert can support. With millions upon millions of creosote, yucca, and joshua trees, and countless bird, reptile, insect, and mammal species. They've always been threatened and damaged by human activity. We've sucked water from the aquifers for growing alfalfa, ranching, and for growing cities. We've tested nuclear weapons and military equipment in a vast area in the center called the test site. We've mined the hell out of our state. But what we are about to do takes the cake. Potentially millions of acres of Nevada's wildlands are now in the planning and early development stage for enormous utility-scale solar projects. For the first time, I am able to show you before and after images of a solar project in Pahrump Valley, about 40 minutes west of Las Vegas. First, we'll head out to chat with activist Shannon Salter, who's been out there witnessing the destruction for the last year. I first came out here to start camping on October 15th of 2021. When I first came out here, everything was totally pristine. There was no fence. There was no heavy equipment. There was no road around the perimeter. And I basically got to watch everything. I got to watch the road being carved out around the 3,000 acre site. I got to see the small tortoise fencing being put in first so that they could, they could remove the desert tortoises from the site and so that the desert tortoises could not get back in. So we are here at the Yellow Pine Solar Destruction Zone. This is a 3,000 acre site and they have started to clear the land. So we had a totally pristine Mojave ecosystem here and they're basically bulldozing everything. The yucca have all been cut down, the creosote have been cut down, and the Mojave desert crust has been totally destroyed. There are 92,000 Mojave yucca that will be cut down on this site, and the Mojave yucca can be hundreds of years old. There are close to a million creosote that will be cut down. Those also have ancient root systems. The roots can be thousands of years old. And the desert pavement itself, which has networks of fungus and ancient bacteria running through it, this desert crust is storing carbon, just like a forest. So all of that is being bulldozed and we are losing all of that carbon sequestration. We are losing a perfectly intact wild Mojave Desert habitat. Mojave Desert tortoise has crashed in the last 10 years, 40% of the entire world's population. And so we're going to be taking up thousands more of its habitat um, many tortoises often die during translocation. I mean, you're, sh you're taking them out of their home range and putting them in some completely new area that they're unfamiliar with, and they're subject to predation that way. Um, but there's other rare plants are gonna go extinct. The connectivity corridors for wildlife movement, such as for bighorn sheep. Bighorn sheep move from mountain range to mountain range across those flat 
desert basins and we're going to block them with these huge solar projects. So extinction is a big one for me. We, we should be able to keep our biodiversity and fight climate change at the same time. This project is 3,000 acres. There's about 30,000 acres in this valley alone of solar applications. So the Bureau of Land Management is considering all of these applications and if they were to approve all of them, it would mean bulldozing the entire 30,000 acre area between Tacopa Road and the town of Pahrump. And if that were to happen, they would bulldoze 500,000 ancient Mojave yucca, millions of creosote, and this is only the beginning of what they would like to do in Nevada as well. So they are, right now, the Bureau of Land Management is conducting environmental surveys about the Green Link transmission line. The transmission lines aren't even built, and we are already seeing the Bureau of Land Management taking applications for dozens of solar projects in the Armagosa Valley and going north along the border of Death Valley National Park, near the small town of Beatty, Nevada. I met up with Laura and Kevin, founders of an advocacy group called Basin and Range Watch, who live near the community of Beatty. Yeah, well, I always liked the desert. Um, lo always loved Nevada because it's just, you know, wide open, a lot of public lands. And now the solar projects have come to our backyard. You know, we've just gone up to see the Sawtooth Solar Project to the north of here. And now this Beatty Energy Center and a couple of other large-scale projects are going to be south of Beatty. The only reason that this area hasn't been built up with large-scale solar is there's been no transmission access. The transmission lines are just tiny. So this Green Link West, which we'll go up and see where that's going to be, right in this area, big, giant, 525 kilovolt, high voltage, 600 mile long transmission line will open up all of this southwestern part of Nevada to energy development. So all these beautiful open wildlands that I moved here to enjoy and so many other people in town did too, are now threatened by tens of thousands of acres of solar energy development. We're standing here at the 7J Ranch, which is a historic uh, property along the most northern springs that come out of the Amargosa River watershed. And we came out here today because of the Green Link Transmission Project. We're gonna have to cross this river somewhere. And they've chosen to go over this Nature Conservancy property so it would be a fairly large transmission line up to 125 feet tall. Why the Nature Conservancy bought this property was for birds. And there are no transmission lines that birds can hit. So to put a tran giant transmission high voltage line right through this meadow next to this pond, spring pond where birds are, this is like a birding hotspot. I mean, that's irresponsible to open this area up to that kind of development. And this ghost town was founded in 1906 and at one point was one of the biggest towns in Nevada. This is a school building which had about 200 students. Now that it's a ghost town, it's one of the most um, popular tourist destinations in the area in the Death Valley region. To the national park boundary, I'd say we're only about maybe five miles, five to seven miles, so not far at all. And you can actually see it in the view here. And that's why we're here. Um, there are some solar developers looking at these flatter landscapes to develop large-scale solar acres. And it would pretty much take up almost the entire view that you'd see until you hit the boundary of Death Valley National Park. And so if they build all of these out, potentially at, at the predicted side, they would actually be over almost 12,000 acres of this landscape completely converted to solar energy. And we think in this case, 
it would actually um, take away from the tourism and visitation of rhyolite and potentially even hurt the economy of, of the small town of Beatty, Nevada, which is largely dependent on a consistent income from tourist dollars. It would really be a disaster to convert this landscape to solar panels that can go on rooftops. We all know that we need to get off of fossil fuels and there's been a lot of conversation about stopping fossil fuels and starting to use wind and solar, but there's been practically no conversation about where to build it and how to build it. So basically what's happening is it's being left up to the developers and we all know how that story goes. When things are left up to the industry, they do things in a way that is cheapest for them and the most profitable for them. So the cheapest and most profitable thing for Nextera Energy and other big energy developers is to come out to a wild landscape and just bulldoze everything. We're really looking at um, losing our arid lands in the United States and globally if we continue to develop solar and wind energy in this destructive manner. Now, uh, to these people, apparently, the, the balance of nature was something that was um, repealed as soon as man came on the scene. Well, you might just as well assume that you could repeal the, the law of gravity. The balance of nature is built of a series of interrelationships between living things and between living things and their environment. You can't just step in with some brute force and change one thing without changing a good many others. Man's attitude toward nature is today critically important simply because we have now acquired a fateful power to alter and to destroy nature. But man is part of nature and his war against nature is inevitably a war against himself. Now, I, I truly believe that we in this generation must come to terms with nature. And I think we're challenged, as mankind has never been challenged before, to prove our maturity and our mastery, not of nature, but of ourselves. Rachel Carson was right. Her book, Silent Spring, inspired the modern environmental movement the environmental agenda now before the Congress includes laws to deal with water pollution, pesticide hazards. And helped pave the way for the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency. But in the 60 years since she wrote that book, over 90% of the ocean's large fish have disappeared. More than two thirds of the planet's land wildlife has been wiped out. The rate of extinction of species is now 1,000 times the average of the previous 60 million years. We are quickly destroying what is left of the natural world. As Carson suggested, this will only destroy ourselves. We can't come in and alter nature further with brute force and expect to solve climate change. In fact, we must radically do the opposite and restore and protect nature. We hope you'll join us in the fight to stop big solar and save the desert. Find out more at desertapocalypse.com and follow along at basinandrangewatch.org. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.